Be aware of end time distractions. Be aware of end time distractions. And we had this the theme. Then our scripture was um, is Ecclesiastes chapter seven verse eight. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, and the the passion in spirit is better than the proud in the spirit. Better is the thing. Praise the Lord. The beginning is always good, but normally the end, that is where our focus is. We have already started the journey. We have already started the race, but are we going to finish it? And how is our end going to be like? Are we going to finish well? Are we going to finish right? Are we going to reach? Are we going to reach that uh, finishing line? Praise the Lord. Are we going to finish well or in a shameful way? Praise the Lord. When I was praying about this message, about this program, it was revealed to me. I saw a man who was holding a, a book very big like a file. He was opening up pages. But to my surprise, there are some pages who are empty, like they were plain, there is nothing. Then he was writing and he was removing. He was writing and he was removing. I called my husband. I was so, I, it was, I was so concerned. I said to him, you know, ev not everyone that starts the race finishes it. I told him, I said, may God help us so that we don't finish in a shameful way. <laughs> Praise the Lord. May God help us, brethren, in order not to finish in a shameful way. There's a lot of distractions, especially the time we are in now. There is a lot of challenges. There is a lot of temptations, but where is our strength? Praise the Lord. Better is the thing, the, better is the end of a thing than the beginning. The Lord is not focused at our beginning, but is most focused on our end. Where are we going to end this journey? Everyone has started the journey of salvation. So many people are following Christ, but are we following Christ in the right way? Praise the Lord. Do we know what really we are doing? Is the church aware of what is happening? Is the church aware of today, the time we are in? Praise the Lord. Because when we are aware, it will give us an idea. It will help us to run and tirelessly. Finishing strong is the attitude of believing in doing something and having courage and faith to come to the end or to the final destination. Do we, ha we have faith. When you want to go somewhere, you have faith in you. I'm going to reach, I'm going home. I'm leaving work, I'm driving home. You have faith, you know you're going to get home. But it's between God, it is up to God. It is God's will for us to reach. Praise the Lord. And it takes hard work because you cannot drive. You start the car and you sit in the middle of the highway and you think you're going to reach. And you say, God is going to help me, right? So you put in your effort. You drive well. You obey the road rules for you to be safe. Praise the Lord. So that is what we are taking. Finishing strong is the attitude of believing and doing something and having courage and faith to reach or to come to the final destination. All of us, we, we, we came to Christ with the hope of going to eternity, of reaching to our final destination, which is heaven. The way we are now, this is our way. This is our road. This is a journey of salvation. And we all want to come to the end of this journey. Praise the Lord. So we're not going to rest until we get where we are going. The journey is just beginning. It's not, it's not, it's just starting. It's just, we are just at the beginning of this journey. Hallelujah. Having strong faith that you can do even something beyond your capacity, beyond your imagination. When you're running, many people start, they, they, they want to run. They go into competitions. Praise the Lord. With the aim of, re of receiving the crown or the reward. Hallelujah. But not all of them who start the journey will reach. Not everyone who starts the competition will receive the crown.
praise the Lord. It takes courage. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is painful to start something with high expectations and not come to the end. It is so painful. Not all who starts the competition gets to finish and gets to win that competition. Praise the Lord. Those who have gone through fire but did not get burnt. Those who have accepted to go through challenges. These end time challenges, brethren, it is so tough. At times you feel like it is too much. At times we feel like we can't take it anymore. At times we feel like, what do we do? We have questions without answer. Why are things happening the way they are happening right now? Praise the Lord. Those who have been harassed for their Christian beliefs and persecuted but did not give up, those are the people that are going to finish this race well. Praise the Lord. At times we live in fear for our Christian beliefs, but that should not hinder us because once we have discovered, this, discovered the purpose of our race, we should not give up. And those who live for Christ will be persecuted. So we should put that in our minds. Whatever happens, we know is happening because we are living for Christ Jesus. Those who have gone through fire but do not get burnt. Yes, many Christians have been killed and others are going through tough persecutions. Think about it. When you hear, when you really hear the news here and there, People are being persecuted. Christians, they are being persecuted, killed. Why? For no reason. Why? Because they're believing in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Beloved, when that time comes, rejoice in the Lord, following our Lord Jesus Christ and our brother Stephen, who endured till his death. We're going to read the book of Acts 20. Verse 18 to 24. Acts 20, verse 18 to 24. And when they had, they had come to him, he said to them, You know, from the first day that I came to Asia, in what manner I always live among you. That is Apostle Paul. Serving the Lord with all humility, humility with many tears and trials, such which happened to me. By, by the plotting of the Jews. How I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaiming to you and taught you publicly and from house to house, despising to Jews and also to, and also to Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And see now I go bound in spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing the things that will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit has fired every city, saying that chains and tribulation await me. But none of these things move me, nor do I count myself dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I received from Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Apostle Paul is an, our example. He did not give up. Why? He was focused. He knew what, he, where he was going. He knew because the Lord had revealed to him what would happen to him. He went all through whatever he went through, persecutions, pains. He went to prison. Praise the Lord. Time will come when we'll be imprisoned for believing in Jesus. Time will come when we'll be rejected, denied, abused, ignored for the sake of the Lord Jesus, for the sake of our Christian belief, for the sake that we are living and we want to live a godly praising life, but we must not give up. We must endure till the end, even to the end, to the time of death. Apostle Paul was showing us and encouraging and encouraging us that nothing should move us, no matter what it is. By the help of the Holy Spirit, we shall overcome. Apostle Paul was aware where he was going and was focused and said, for to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. 
Philippians 1 27. To live is Christ, to die is gain. Whether I die, as long as I'm in Christ Jesus, as long as I'm assured of, of my journey, of my race, as long as I'm assured of my Christian life, I know, I don't care. Praise the Lord. That is Apostle Paul. So can we take that example? Can we follow him? Can we be encouraged? Can we be uh, uh, strengthened? Praise the Lord. He knew it was, and he was sure of his achievements. He was willing and looking forward to that finishing line. Being confident, aiming hard, placed between the two, having the desire to depart and be with Christ Jesus. That is Apostle Paul, Philippians 1, 23. Praise the Lord. So what is it that can hinder us, take us away from this, from this journey? Is it challenges? Is it poverty? Sometimes you might sleep hungry without food. But can that take us away from God, from the love of God? When we are being tried, we are made strong. And our faith in God increases because we see God as our own hope. And in that trial period time, it requires us to come closer to God. Otherwise, if it is very easy for many to stumble, especially in times of trouble, in time of trials, in time of persecutions, in times of hardships, Training. God is training us. When we go through various trials, God is training us. Because it is through that trial that will bring us closer to God even more than before. Because the more you are tested, the more we are tried, we cry to God. We run to God for help. Praise the Lord. Training normally is not easy, but it requires patience, determination. We see Stephen's determination was not changed, but he focused knowing his reward was ahead, even to the time of his death, he was focused. He, would, he did not look back. Praise the Lord. We're going to read the book of Acts chapter seven, and we read verse 54 to 60. This is the word of the Lord. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Hallelujah. Stephen was focused. We see in verse 60, he said, and he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. He cried to God for his soul's sake. He cried to God, not even cursing, not telling God to judge them or to do bad things to them, but he cried to them, he said, Lord, forgive them. Just as our Lord Jesus said at the cross, at the time of death, Lord, forgive them. We'll forgive them. Be what? Because they don't know what they are doing. Because they are in darkness and we are in the light. Because they don't have Christ and we have Christ in us. Lord, forgive them. Praise the Lord. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God when he was being tried, when he was in pain. It is not easy to die. You know, like you're, you're being killed. You see people, stones coming towards you. It's not easy. Praise the Lord. He was seeing stones coming towards him. They were beating him. But he, he did not say anything. 
And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. That is our wish. I wish we will do that at the time of our death. When we're being tested, when we're being tempted, when we're being persecuted, we will call upon God, Lord, receive my spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Stephen did not fight to save himself. He did not allow the flesh to hinder him from his, his eternal crown, but allowed himself to suffer persecution following his Lord Jesus Christ's example. Amen. The Lord Jesus set up an example for us to follow all who believe in him and are faithful must suffer persecutions. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 12. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 12. Yeah, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecutions. So we are, we are aware of that. We know that. Hallelujah. We are aware that we're going to go through all these things. We'll suffer persecutions. It doesn't matter what kind of persecutions. The spiritual manipulation is a persecution. When evil spirits are attacking, they're not attacking you because of something else. They are attacking you because you are harassing them, because you are an enemy to them. Praise the Lord. When people are forsaking, when people are rejecting you, when people are abusing you falsely, they are abusing you falsely because you of your Christian belief. When people are laughing at you, it's because of your Christian belief. Praise the Lord. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. That's Jesus Christ telling us, Matthew 5 verse 10. Blessed are they. Amen. When you are being persecuted and you remain strong and you do not deny the Lord, you do not deny the cross, blessed are you when you are being persecuted for righteousness' sake. It is very, very rewarding to be persecuted for being a righteous man, righteous woman. For being harassed, for because of your righteousness in Christ Jesus, because of your lifestyle, the holy lifestyle, because you're trying to praise God and you're being persecuted. Blessed are you when you are made strong. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ warned us about the things that could hinder his followers, the end time persecutions. We're going to read John 15, verse 18 to 20. John 15, John 15, verse 18. I'll read in Jesus' name. John chapter 15, verse 18. Henceforth, I call you not servants, I call you no, uh, 14, 18, sorry. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. You see that? We are being chosen. We were chosen. Jesus chose us, he picked us from the world. He chose us, he called us our names from the world. He separated us from the world. And now the world is hurting us. Now the world will persecute us. Why? Because we are not of this world. If we have this in mind, we we'll remain strong and strengthened because we know we are not of this world. Whatever happened, Stephen knew that he is not of this world. Praise the Lord. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. 
21. But all these things will they do to you for my name's sake, because they know not him who sent me. All these things will happen to us. All these things will happen to believers. Amen. But why, what do we have to put in mind? We are not of this world. We are going somewhere. We are on our journey to eternity. We are on our journey. We are on a road. We are on a trip. We are going somewhere. And we are sure, we have the assurance in the Lord Jesus Christ that we will get there. He's encouraging us when it comes to that, when that time comes that we know, oh, it was said. The scripture said the world will hurt me. The scripture said I will go through persecutions. Amen. The world does not even know anything about persecution or hardship. Everything to them is counted normal and usual. Their only way to solving problem is through violence. But for us is to seek God in order to find shelter under his umbrella. Amen. The world does not know. Look at what is happening right now in the world. They don't know what is happening. Nations are fighting against each other. Leaders are fighting against each other. The churches are fighting. Brethren are fighting. Pastors are fighting. Hallelujah. Families are fighting. Because we don't know. Because the world is in darkness, they don't know. It's not been revealed to them. The only way to solve these problems is to do riots. People are doing riots. People are, people are protesting everywhere. People are killing one another. Wars everywhere. Praise the Lord. Our desire is to remain faithful. If it means to die, we know where we are going is sure. To remain faithful is the only way. Hallelujah. Matthew 5, verse 10 to, 20, to 12. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they when men shall reveal you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. So we have the assurance, we, we, we know, we have the promise. This was, it's not just beginning now. When you see Christians being killed in different countries, it's not, it's not new. It's not just a coincidence. It was written. The scripture states it. Jesus said because he knew what will come in the time like this. But he was encouraging us so that whatever happens, when that time comes of persecution, we know it was, it's not only happening to us. It, was happen it happened also to those who trusted in God before. It happened to the prophets. It happened to the apostles, even to the Lord, our God, Jesus Christ. It happened to him. He was persecuted. He was abused. He was denied, he was rejected, he was spitted on, he was judged. So who are we? We are his followers, amen. So we are going to go through these things, but we are strengthened in him. If he overcame, we will overcome. If he overcame the world, he said, behold, I have overcome the world. Be strong, always remembering Jesus Christ's words. Hallelujah. Our goal is to finish our race with flying colors. May God help us in the, his name. There's a lot of things that would cause us to not to finish well this race. One, failure to forsake our personal idols. Amen. Failure to forsake our personal idols could, could cause us how hinder us from reaching or finishing well. However much we are striving hard to enter by obeying the gospel, having done all the necessary institutions, changing our garments, serving God untirelessly, we might 
be still having idols that we are that could hinder us praise the lord this is very dangerous to our souls because it can work and it can hinder us it can change our christian beliefs as well we see many people in the in the old testament who started very well but did not finish praise the lord we see jehu doing very well fulfilling god's given assignment by destroying israel's idols as he was directed but he forgot to forsake his own idols we're going to read the book of second uh, kings chapter 9 verse 30 i read now when jehu had come to jezreel jezebel heard of it and she put paint on her eyes and adorned her head and looked through a window amen jehu destroyed idols Israel died idols. Jehu fulfilled the, the message of Elijah. Praise the Lord. Elijah told Jezebel, according to the word of God, that she would die. And the same death he, pro, he prophesied is the same death she died. We see Jehu being used by God in various areas. But Jehu, he still had idols. We're going to read 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 18, 27. I read, Then Jehu gathered all the people together and said to them, Ahab served Baal, a little Jehu will serve him much. Now therefore, call to me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants and all his priests. Let no one be missing, for I have a great sacrifice for Baal. Whoever is missing shall not live. But Jehu acted deceptively with the intent of destroying the worshipers of Baal. And Jehu said, proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. So they proclaimed it. Then Jehu sent throughout all Israel and all the worshipers of Baal came so that there was not a man left who did not come. So they came unto the temple of Baal and the temple of Baal was full from one end to the other. And he said to one in charge of the wardrobe, Bring out vestments for all the worshipers of Baal. So he brought out all vestments for them. Then Jehu and Johanadbab, the son of Rechab, went to the temple of Baal and said to the worshipers of Baal, Search and see that no servants of the Lord are here with you, but only the worshipers of Baal. So they went in and offered sacrifices and burnt offerings. Now Jehu had appointed for himself 80 men on the outside and had said, if any of these men who I have brought unto your hands escape, whoever lets him escape, it shall be his life or the life of the others. Now it happened, as soon as he had made the end of offering and burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, go in and kill them. Let no one come out. And they killed them with the edge of the sword. And the guards and the officers threw them out and went into the inner room of the temple of Baal. And they brought the sacred pillars out of the temple of Baal and burned them. Then they broke down the sacred pillar of Baal and tore down the temple of Baal and made it a refuge dump to this day. Praise the Lord. So he, for, he eliminated the prophets of Baal. Amen. He fulfilled the prophecy of Elijah by eliminating Jezebel for her whoredom, witchcraft, and murder, according to the word of God by prophet Elijah. He eliminated the idols of Israel. Praise the Lord. But Jehu still had idol of his father's house. Jehu did not, did not give up his own idol. Jehu did good, but still he was punished for the wrong. That's God we serve. Who does not show partiality for men? Jehu was punished. Praise the Lord. At times we might have done all things, but there is that we still have some idols in our lives. And that's why God said in Ezekiel 18, 26, 28, that the soul that sin shall die. It doesn't matter whether we were started well or where we, wherever we are in a spiritual status. The soul that sin shall die. 
But the same God said, I do not glory in the death of a wicked man. I take no pleasure in the death of a wicked man. For the will of God is for sinners to return to him, for sinners to repent and come back from their wickedness and do his will. Praise the Lord. We know that our work shall go with us. We shall go with our works. So whatever we do here, it will follow us. Amen. If we do good, we'll go, we'll go with it. If we do bad, but help others to do good, our, it's only our own works that will follow us. Praise the Lord. So what are those idols? We have so many, we could be having so many idols in our lives. Jehu took care of others' sins and he did not take care of his own salvation. At times we become confident, especially when we see ourselves with mega churches having so many followers, receiving so many compliments from men, we forget about our spiritual lives. When God uses us to do his work, let us humble ourselves before him instead of developing pride within us, thinking it is us who have done work, the work. When one humbles himself herself, God opens up and reveals much things, even personal sins. If it was not God's grace, Joshua would have finished in a shameful way. Praise the Lord. But God showed mercy to Joshua. When we read the book of Ezekiel, of Zechariah, Zechariah chapter three from verse, verse three to, to five, we see Joshua, the high priest, standing before the Lord with a filthy garment. His garment was spotted. His garment was dirty. He was having a sin, an idol in his life. He was not aware of. But God of mercy showed him mercy. May the Lord show us mercy in Jesus' name. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. Amen. Therefore, let him who thinks he's ready, he's fine, he's okay. Amen. We take, sometimes we take advantage of God. We think that we are fine in our journey, yet we are not. Jehu did not know about God's judgment. If he really knew, he would have taken care of his idol before he could take care of others' idols. He would have thrown away his idols first. Hallelujah. Jehu started strong but he ended up in a shameful way. Praise the Lord. Another thing is being familiar with God can cause us, can hinder our journey. In this journey of salvation, there is a lot of distractions, including people, even our own people, our family members, friends, and people we even trust can cause us to forsake the way of the Lord, causing us to be terminated and disqualified by God. Amen. We are going to read the first Kings 13 verse nine. The man of God, I love this, I love this scripture. We see the man of God performing and fulfilling the will of God. But his end was shameful. The man of God did the assignment that was given to him very well, but never reached back his home, being killed by the lion along the way because he did not follow God's instructions as he was commanded. First, First Kings chapter 13, in Jesus' name. Okay. Kings 13, verse 9. And I read, For so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You shall not eat bread, nor drink water, nor return by the same way you came. 
This man of God was sent and he was instructed, do not eat food, do not drink anything. Do not turn back the way you have gone. Along the way, this journey, this race, there are some distractions being caused by people. Some of, of those people can be people with the jealous. There was, the Bible tells us there was an old prophet. Amen. There was an old prophet. So this man of God did well according to the word of God. But the old prophet became jealous. Amen. He distracted him. But it tells us that we should be vigilant. We should be spiritually alert. Amen. Because along the way, we don't know what will be our distraction. Where will it come from? It will come at the time we don't expect. It might be brought in by some people we do not even expect. Praise the Lord. The old prophet telling the man of God, I am also a man of God like you. I'm also a prophet like you. I'm also, I also, in, I'm also in holiness. I also serve God. I also am minister of the gospel. Distracting us from the right way. Come, let us do this. Come, let us collaborate. We must be vigilant. We must be aware of persecutions. We must be aware of distractions. The man of God went with the old prophets and ate food. Praise the Lord. Drank. Praise the Lord. From the place where he was commanded not to eat from anything from. And the same old prophet who deceived him. Now the word of God came through this old prophet. Telling him that says the Lord. Because he did not heed to the voice of God. Because he ate from the place where he told you not to eat. But he's the one who served him food. He's the one who distracted him. Praise the Lord. Now the message is coming through him, warning him he's not going to reach to his destination. The man of God sandaled his horse. He started the journey along the way. He was killed by the lion. Why? Because distraction. Because he was distracted. Because he was not spiritually alerted. Because he might have come, become familiar with God. We must be aware. Hallelujah. This salvation journey, there is nothing like I know more. We must cry to God all the time. Amen. We're seeking the soul. The way he started. He was anointed. He was chosen by God. He did a lot. He saved Israel from various wars. Praise the Lord. He was used mightily by God. But see how King Saul ended his journey. See how his, his death was like. Shamefully. The whole king of Israel. See how he died. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 10. From verse 1. We see Saul's legacy. Whatever he did. A strong man of God, but see what happened to him. Distractions. Amen. Accepting or heeding to the voice of his fellow men, being told to go and destroy the Amalekites, not leaving anything, but he chose to save the fat, the riches. Praise the Lord. What happened? God rejected him. He was replaced by David. Hallelujah. So many of us have been rejected. We have given away our spiritual status. Praise the Lord. We have been replaced. Many men of God started well, but right now they are living in a shameful life. Many have gone backward because of the trials of this world, because of the challenges of this world. 
Saul was also a king like other kings in Israel. He was also strong. He was also anointed because he was anointed by Samuel. According to the word of God and direction and instructions. God chose him. He trusted him. Praise the Lord. But his fellow men, he told him, no, let us save the, 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 the fatty things. He saved the king. He never told him, go and destroy everything. He saved King Agag. Amen. He brought him alive. Someone telling him, what, what is this? What did you save the, the, you know, the lamb and the fatty things? He said, no, I did not say, what about the sheep are here? You know, what about these things I'm seeing here? He was rejected by God. He disappointed God. How many times have we disappointed God? The church today is disappointing Jesus Christ. The things the church is doing today. Amen. The church is living in denial, rebellion, disobedient. We are being familiar with God. Even the things we know is bad, the things we talk about, the things we hear, we're still comfortable, living comfortable. May God help us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So was king chosen and anointed by God. We see King Solomon. I'm just breaking down some of these people we know. Some of these people we read about. They had a legacy. Amen. They were anointed. They were blessed. But their end was shameful. They never, they started very well. Solomon started very well. Praise the Lord. First, first Kings 11. And we read verse 1. And I read, but King Solomon loved many foreign women, as well as the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Sidons, and Hittites. Amen. Solomon's idol was last. He was last. He married women that God told him not to. He intermarried women with various gods, different gods. He, they changed his heart. He started serving their God, forsaking his own God, the God of Israel, the God of his father. What happened? His heart was turned away from God. The idol of lust in Solomon's life. Yes, he built the temple of God. Yes, he did great things. Yes, he had wisdom. Yes, he was given rich. But his end was shameful. It costed him the whole kingdom. But for the sake of David, God did not take the whole kingdom from him. Praise the Lord. May God help us. Solomon was a great man. Everybody knew about Solomon being loved, being given wisdom, but his last turned his heart from following his God. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter four, verse 12, 18. First Samuel chapter four, verse 12, 18. And I read, then a man of Benjamin ran from the battle line the same day and came to Shiloh with his clothes torn and dirt on his head. Now when he came, there was Eli sitting on his seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the noise of the outcry, he said, what does the sound of this tumult mean? And the man came quickly and told Eli. Eli was 98 years old and his eyes were so dim he could not see. Then the man said to Eli, I am he who came from the battle, and I fled today from the battle line. And he said, what happened, my son? So the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has been a great slaughter among the people. 
also your two sons, Hopani and Phineas, are dead, and the ark has been captured. Then it happened when he mentioned the ark of the God that Eli fell off his seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died. For the man was old and heavy, and he had judged Israel 40 years. Praise the Lord. We see the death of Eli. Eli died shamefully. The priest of God, he had served God for many years. But along the way, he became familiar with God. Amen. He knew the sins of his sons, but he did not do anything. He did not change anything. He was familiar with God. The sin of his sons, but he failed to readdress it or warn them or change it or do anything, but it caused his soul. God does not play games when it comes to sin. However much he loves sinners and wants them to turn away and be saved, but he still punish for sin. At times God warns us, at times we hear, at times we get, you know, warnings, but when we become familiar with God, God is not a joker. He's not, he doesn't play games. So it is us to take a responsibility. We have to be responsible for such things. Praise the Lord. The whole place, see how he ended up. He ended, he finished in a shameful way. Hallelujah. We also look at Moses, the man of God. Moses, when you look at Moses and Aaron, how they started, how they performed great, great wonders and miracles in Egypt, trying to, trying to, to, to help the children of Israel, to save them from the harassment and the captivity of Egypt. And yes, God used them. Yes, they did great things. Yes, they were feared. Amen. But did they reach? No. Did they finish well? No. All the children of Israel came out of Egypt. Did all of them reach or finish well? No. Why? Destructions along the way. Praise the Lord. Moses never reached the promised land. However much he desired to reach, he did not reach. He did not finish well. Aaron did not finish well. Miriam did not finish well. And other elders of the children of Israel. So that shows us who God is. Praise the Lord. That tells us who God is. We don't want to be like people who are those people who work at the bus. You know, people work at the bus station, they'll help others to board their bus. Those who work at the airport, they check people in, then they stay, they remain in the same place. Amen. So if we help people to come and to come to Jesus, if we help people to get out of, to you know, get rid of sin, but for us, we remain with, we keep our idols, we remain with our idols, it will not save us. Amen. Praise the Lord. When we look at also at, at, at Samson in Judges 16 from verse 1, Samson was a great man. He was a fighter. He was strong. He was feared by the Philistines. See Samson's death. Shameful. He did not finish his assignment because of lust. His idol was lust. Amen. Samson was known and feared by all the Philistines. We look at Judas. His, sin, his idol was Mammon. In Matthew 21, 23, 27. I'm not reading all the scriptures because I want to save time. Hallelujah. When you look at, we can look at this, Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, and we'll read verse 23, 27. If you're there, you can read. 
in Jesus' name. Matthew 21, verse 23. Now when he came into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people confronted him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? But Jesus answered and said to them, I also ask you one thing, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, where was it from? From heaven or from men? And they reasoned amongst themselves saying, if we say from heaven, he will say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, we fear the multitude will count John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus and said, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. Read Matthew 16, 26. Read Matthew 16, 26, please. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will he give a man in exchange for his soul? Praise the Lord. So Judas, Judas tried to, you know, he wanted the money. He loved the money so much. Hallelujah. He loved money so much in that he sold his Lord. He exchanged his Lord with money. Judas was in the ministry of Jesus. Judas started the ministry. You, you, you know, he ministered with other apostles. Hallelujah. But see how he ended up. See his death. Did he finish up like other apostles? No. He was replaced. He died shamefully. Praise the Lord. So we must be very, very careful. At this time, money cannot save anything. Money cannot buy life. Money cannot buy, cannot change any situation right now. Praise the Lord. Children of Israel, many of them never finished but perished in the wilderness, spending even much time than they were supposed to. We have to count the cost for the things we are attending to could cost our souls. We have to count the cost of everything we do. Praise the Lord. It's time now to give up on those idols, not later, to give up on those idols. I don't know what idols we have. Those idols could be hatred, could be anger, unforgiveness, greedy, gossip, causing divisions, praise the Lord, murmuring, complaining, all sorts of idols in our lives could cause or could cost our souls. We must have faith in God, run untirelessly, not to give up, place forward, try to place God, not man, because man has nothing to offer, but God offers eternal life. Be spiritual, sensitive, and be prayerful. Our Lord Jesus promised us in John 14, 1, 3, how he had gone to prepare a place for his followers, a place for his children, a place for us, a place for me and you. And it's everyone's desire to get to that place. When we read that scripture, it gives us an assurance. It gives us hope, knowing where we are going. Our home is already prepared. No, we are not of this world. Praise the Lord. And he is coming back to take us. We are all aware of the time we are, all, we are in. We are all aware the time of rapture is at hand. We are all aware Jesus can return any time sooner than we expect. We are all aware death comes at any time when we don't expect it. We are all aware things are happening. We are now, the time we are in now is fulfillment of the scriptures. The uncurable diseases, wars everywhere, divisions everywhere, rejections, we are aware. 
Time to give up on idols. Time to see God and come to closer to God. Time to trust God more than ever before. Time to believe in the word of God than ever before. So let us not get weary of the current situation. Many people are filled with fear of what next. People are filled with fear. But we, the children of God, our hope is in God. Our trust, our faith is in God. Whatever comes, it will, if it comes, it, it, if it happens, it happens. As long as we know our spiritual status. As long as we know where we are going, where we are heading to. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Amen. Our home is there. We don't want to be among, the, as I said before, I saw this man was removing names in the file and putting names. Some papers, some pages in that file were empty. There was nothing written on. How are we going to finish? Are we going to be left at when the rupture, when the trumpet sounds, and are we going to remain behind? People of the world will laugh at us. Oh, you were also left behind. What happened? I thought you were a woman, you are a woman of God, you are a man of God. I saw you preaching everywhere on social media. I saw you preaching on the streets. I saw you doing great wonders. What happened? May God help us. May God help us. Hallelujah. What happened? People are going to call our phones, see if we are also left behind. And you answer the phone, what happened? You also left behind that word also. What happened? What is it that could cause me and you to be left behind? What is it that could cause me and you to die and not reach where we are going, our eternity? We must strive, we must work hard, we must be prayerful, we must forsake the things of this world, all these distractions and necessary things. Think twice, be wise, listen. Praise the Lord. Seek the presence of God for unanswered questions. It is time for us to get closer to God more than ever before, to rejoice in the midst of great trials and tribulations, to help others to come to that hope and help them overcome fear, to seek the presence of God for unanswered questions. It's time to be more vigilant and spiritually alert. Praise the Lord. May the Lord God help us. And God bless you. In Jesus' name. Over to you.